I bought the GoPro Hero 5 Black that I'm shooting on right now for 84 euros, which is about 90 US dollars. And it includes basically everything you need to get started shooting. So the question is, can you use this as a YouTube camera? This camera can shoot in 4K up to 30 FPS, 2.7K up to 60 FPS, and 120 FPS at 1080p. It is very compact and can easily fit in your pocket. It has a wide angle lens, but you can choose different field of views in the camera. It has a touchscreen, HDMI output, USB-C, and is waterproof. The camera is small and lightweight, and you can mount it basically anywhere. If you don't want to fiddle with settings, focus, and so on, you don't have to. You can just mount it and hit record. The focus is fixed, so no need to worry about manual focus or an autofocus system that decides to focus on the wrong thing. Everything is in focus with the deep depth of field, and auto exposure and auto white balance does a very good job. And it's small and lightweight enough that it doesn't get in the way. Those are all reasons I think this camera might be a good fit for people that don't want to get too distracted by the camera and just want to be able to hit record. But if you want to use manual settings and have a bit more control, you can. Like I'm doing right now, for example. Let's look at how to set up the camera to get the most out of it. You have the ability to choose different field of view options in the camera. This is completely software based and will let you choose how wide or tight of a shot you want. You have five different options, but essentially it's three main ones and two bonus ones. I'll explain in a second. The first one is called wide and uses the full ultra wide angle lens and has that classic GoPro fisheye look. Next up we have medium, which is a little bit tighter, but still quite wide. And if you want to go a bit tighter than that, you also have narrow, which in GoPro terms might be a narrow option, but overall it's still on the wider side. And now we come to the two bonus options. They're not actually called bonus options, that's just what I call them, since they are variations of the main ones. First we have linear, which uses the same field of view as medium, but also applies lens correction to remove the distortion in the camera, which straightens those curved lines and removes the typical GoPro look. And then we have SuperView. SuperView is an interesting one because it achieves its unique field of view by using the whole 4x3 sensor and the wide field of view option and essentially squeezes that into a 16x9 frame. Note that this comes with a lot of distortion. The way the camera achieves the different field of views with a fixed prime lens is essentially cropping the sensor and using a smaller part of it to achieve a bigger crop of the image. And because of that, you can't shoot narrow in 4K for example. There simply aren't enough pixels on that smaller part of the sensor. I'll try not to go too in depth in this video about all the different resolution and field of view combinations. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description to a more detailed video. But in short, you can shoot wide all the way up to 4K, medium or linear in 2.7K and narrow in 1080p. If you want to factor in slow motion and high frame rates, it gets more complicated though. But out of these options, if you're shooting a shot like this one, where you're talking to camera, I would recommend going with linear in 2.7K. This will get rid of the fisheye look and make your footage look less GoPro-y, if that's a word. Actually, what you're watching right now is shot at 2.7K linear. I have shot it a bit wider than intended and cropped it, since for this particular shot it was still a bit too wide for my liking. And the reason I'm not shooting this at 4K is simply that I don't want a very wide lens for this shot and I therefore also have to go down in resolution. I have turned the in-camera sharpening all the way down and I'm using the flat colors. I think the default settings are over sharpened with too much contrast and saturation, so this will allow me to fine tune it myself. But if you don't want to mess with anything in post, you can shoot with GoPro color. But I would still recommend turning the sharpening down a bit. In this scenario I have full control of the lighting and have locked in my white balance, shutter and ISO. But what if you're vlogging and just want to leave it all to auto? How would that look? So here you have it, shooting in 4K wide and I've set everything to auto. Auto ISO, auto white balance and auto shutter. It is very easy to use and all I've done is basically pick up the camera, point it towards my face and hit record. And this is at an arm's length distance away from my face. Here's about a, let's say 45 degree bend in my arm and back to a fully extended arm. 
This is however lens corrected and straight out of the camera the wide option will look like this. But now back to a corrected image. And if you're interested in how to very easily do this, I'll leave a link to a video in the description. But you can do this with any field of view. You're not limited to the linear option in the camera if you want straight lines and try to remove that GoPro look. But hold on for a second and I'll switch over to 2.7K linear and you'll see how that looks as well. So this is 2.7K linear, with no corrections needed in post. And this is probably what most people will use, since it's good to go straight out of the camera. But that's it for the vlogging mode, back to the studio. If you're shooting YouTube videos, the image is only half the video. You also need audio. So what are our options when it comes to audio? Well, first off, we have a built-in microphone. This is going to be the easiest and cheapest option, but it's also going to be the lowest quality option. This is however lens corrected, and straight out of the camera the wide option will look like this. But now back to a corrected image. Option 2 is to buy the GoPro microphone adapter. This will plug into the USB-C port of the camera and let you plug in an external microphone. This will significantly increase the audio quality since you will be able to A. Use a higher quality microphone and more importantly B. Get the microphone closer to you. This could be a lavalier mic on your shirt, like I'm using right now, or something like a shotgun mic on a stand, for example. You could also record audio externally and sync it in your editing software. And if you don't want to spend money on an audio recorder, you can do what I'm doing right now and plug a lavalier mic straight into your phone. The camera records to a micro SD card, and according to the manual, it will accept cards up to 128 gigabytes. At the high settings, which will record at 60 megabits per second, 128 gigabytes will give you about 4 hours and 44 minutes of footage. Next to the micro SD card, we have the battery. It's swappable and you can get them for very cheap. I paid 5 euros for an extra one. The camera has a USB C port with multiple functions. It can be used with GoPro's microphone adapter I mentioned earlier. You can transfer files to your computer or you can use it to charge the battery, or power the camera even without the battery in it. Next to the USB-C port we have a micro HDMI port. This will allow you to connect an external monitor if you want to monitor yourself while filming, like I'm doing right now. Or you can get a clean image without any overlays if you want to live stream. The camera does have electronic stabilization, which will crop the video 10% and stabilize your footage. It's nothing amazing though. Note that this isn't available in 4K. It doesn't have hypersmooth like the newer models, but it does record gyro data, so you can essentially create your own hypersmooth in post with more control. For some shots you might not want it, and for the ones you do want stabilized you can control how much. To do this you can use Gyroflow, which is great for this application, and I will release a video on how to do it. I'll put a link in the description once it's out, and if it's not there yet, consider subscribing to get notified when it is. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more, and I'll see you next time.